If you are planning on coming to Israel in summer, which is when most people visit Israel, this video is going to be very helpful. Summer in Israel starts in May and ends in October. You can expect temperature of over 30 degrees Celsius, around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and zero rain. Let's get started. Summer tip number one, don't come in summer, if you can help it. When I was guiding Israelis in Berlin, sometimes they would come to me and ask me something, and then they would add, but tell me what you would tell a friend, not a tourist. If a friend were to ask me which season is the best for visiting Israel, then summer would be the last season on my list. It is hot, more expensive, and much more crowded. Now, if you are coming from a cold country, you might think, hmm, but I like it hot. No, it can be as hot as hell, but for many visitors, summer is the only time they can make it. Or maybe you are coming on business or for a personal event like a wedding, which tend to take place in summer, and you don't have much say in the matter. If you do come in summer, the following tips will definitely be of use. Summer tip number two, go early. As I said, I used to guide in Berlin, and over there, most of the tourist attractions open up at 10 a.m. in the morning. In the old city of Jerusalem, some of the sites open very early. The Western Wall is open 24-7. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre opens at 4.30 a.m. in summer, and non-Muslim can go up to Temple Mount from 6.30 a.m. for about three hours. The best time to tour the old city is 6, 7, or 8 a.m. It is not that hot yet, the groups haven't all got there yet, and you have the city to yourself. This is the time when I shoot most of my videos in the old city in Jerusalem. You could do my new video tour in Jerusalem early in the morning. I will leave a link below. Summer tip number three, spend weekends in the city and weekdays outside the city. I've said this before in an older video about general tips for Israel, and I've gotten so much positive feedback about it that I will say it again here, as it is even more relevant when talking about the summers here. Israel is a small, densely populated country. The nice places in the Negev, Galilee, and the Golan Heights are always full on weekends, so I recommend spending Sunday, which is a working day in Israel, till Thursday in the countryside, and Friday and Saturday in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. I think that I would even plan my whole trip around this concept. It's a win-win-win situation. You usually pay less for accommodation from Sunday to Thursday outside the cities. The natural sites are not as full, and in the cities there is more to do and less traffic on the weekends. Summer tip number four, go late. One of the things that tourists love about Israel is that you feel safe and are safe when you go out at night. Now, you always need to be careful when going out, but even in the middle of the night, in the middle of the week, you can go out and places are open, people are sitting outside. There is a good vibe, especially here in Tel Aviv. Now, I said earlier you should go early, and now I'm telling you to go out late. How can you do both? And now we come to my secret tip for staying handsome. A lot of people ask me, Oren, how come you are almost 40 and yet you still look so good? And I tell them I owe it all to the power of the Schlafstunde. Schlafstunde is a Yiddish word for afternoon nap. If you are from Spain, you will already know it as siesta. By the way, this is why people from Spain look better than all other Europeans. We are meant to sleep at midday. It is human biology, and it is hot outside. It's the only logical thing to do. Another beauty tip I can give you is to use Photoshop, like I did here. With little to no effort, even you could look great. Tip number five, go underground. There are many underground archaeological sites in Jerusalem. The City of David, which is mostly underground, the Western Wall Tunnels, the Burnt House, the new Chain of Generation Center next to the Western Wall, it makes sense to visit these sites when the sun is at its hottest. And I would add, visit museums as well. Now, I have to say that when I travel and I go into a museum, I almost always think to myself, man, I would do it better. You see amazing artifacts, but the information giving is so boring that after 40 minutes, you are like praying for a Schlafstunde. 
I think that in Israel, museums do a better job of communicating the significance of the artifacts to visitors. But still, when planning your day, check and see if there is a museum tour you can join. They are usually free and great. Summer tips number six, go north. Israel is very small and very diverse. Not just the people, but also the geography. The north is cooler and greener. You can expect temperatures to be three to five degrees lower in the Galilee and the Golan Heights than in the center of Israel. Jerusalem also sits at a high altitude of around 800 meters, so it is a bit cooler than Tel Aviv. You mostly feel it early in the morning and in the evening. As much as I love the desert, I would recommend staying in the north. I hope to make more videos about the Galilee in the coming months, so please subscribe and hit the bell. Summer tip seven, bring long sleeve tops too. Israelis love their air conditions. They love them so much that they tend to use them too much. On the train and in museum, it might feel freezing cold in the middle of summer. So if you are sensitive to the cold, be sure to bring something warm along with you. If you are planning on visiting holy sites, then your knees, shoulders, and cleavage have to be covered, so keep that in mind too when you are thinking about which clothes to bring with you. Summer tip eight, go to the water. Another example of how diverse Israel is, is the different kinds of seas that you will find in such a small place. You have the Sea of Galilee, which is the lowest freshwater lake in the world. You have the Dead Sea, which is a must see, the Mediterranean and the Red Sea in Eilat. Now, I would recommend a lot in winter, but I don't recommend it in summer. But I do recommend all the other seas. You can definitely choose a hotel that is next to the water. The Mediterranean, the Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea, or a place next to one of the rivers that feed the Jordan River. If you head for the Dead Sea, I would just add that you can't stay in the water for too long. If you come to the Dead Sea hotels in summer, when it is around 40 degrees every day, I would come to relax in the hotels. A lot of people visit the Dead Sea after Jerusalem, as Jerusalem is so intense that some quiet time in a hotel might be necessary. And don't forget your flip-flops, as the salt crystals can be sharp and the sand can be very hot. Summer tip number nine, September holidays. Children go back to school on the 1st of September, so that when prices go down a bit, but weather-wise, September is still summer, still very hot. Sometimes the Jewish holidays, New Year, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot are in September, so you do need to take that into consideration. I've written about it on my website, and I will leave a link below the video that lets you know what the dates and what you can expect. Summer tip number 10, the biggest danger in Israel. You could do the opposite of every tip that I've given you here. You could go to the south to the beautiful desert, not visit the seas, spend the hottest hours of the day outside, and still have a great trip. But there is one thing you need to know and be aware of. Many people have security concerns before coming to Israel, but the biggest danger for you in Israel is not a war or a terrorist attack, but you know, let me show you. Huh? It's the sun. Or to be more precise, how you deal with the heat. If you find yourself in a hospital in Israel, the chances are you are there because you didn't drink enough water or you went hiking when it was too hot. There are two dangers here. The first is dehydration when you don't drink enough, but much more dangerous is heat stroke when your body can't cool itself down. I've seen so many people, especially young people, heading off on long hikes in the desert when it is too hot. Even if you are fit, even if last week you ran the Berlin Marathon or the Wisconsin Marathon, don't go off on hikes when it is too hot. Doing so is stupid and disrespectful of the desert. On the hot days when the elite units of the army don't even train, you think you should go hiking? And one last bonus tip wear sunscreen. If I could give you one tip for your future trip to Israel, sunscreen would be it. The long-term benefits of sunscreen have been proven by scientists.
that's it guys be sure to like this video and please subscribe and hit the bell so you will be notified when i upload a new video the next videos are going to be about the tour in biblical jerusalem quotes from israeli prime ministers and a video about the jewish jesus a very interesting video and not what you might expect see you in the next video yalla bye